You're watching Inside Boston History. Hi, I'm Ranger Jessica, and today I'm standing in front of Boston's first public meeting space, Faneuil Hall. Originally built in 1742, Faneuil Hall is not only a place of celebration, protest, and debate, but also a place of great controversy as well. Built by wealthy merchant Peter Faneuil as a central market, in the design he included a second floor meeting hall so the community would accept the building as a gift. It was here that earlier Bostonians challenged the sovereignty of King George III, setting a path towards independence. When George Washington and later the Marquis de Lafayette visited Boston during their grand tours of the United States, Bostonians welcomed them with grand ceremonies inside the hall. Bostonians celebrated here once again when USS Constitution defeated the British Royal Navy ship HMS Guerriere during the War of 1812. Expanded to its present size from 1805 to 1806, the larger size provided the perfect setting for organizations to debate human rights issues. Abolitionists like Wendell Phillips, William Lloyd Garrison, and others spoke at Faneuil Hall frequently against the evils of slavery. In fact, Frederick Douglass spoke here a record 14 times. Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Julia Ward Howe, and local favorite Lucy Stone used Faneuil Hall to remind the public that since women could not vote, the promises of the Declaration of Independence had not been met. During the Irish Potato Famine, a meeting at Faneuil Hall in 1847 saw the establishment of a famine relief committee, which raised over $150,000. It could be said that the challenge that brought some of the biggest crowds to the hall was tied to another revolution, an industrial one. 12-hour workdays, six-day work weeks, and even children as young as 10 years old laboring in unsafe factory conditions brought organized labor to Faneuil Hall, drawing attention to the plight of the American worker. Over the centuries, many people have come to Faneuil Hall, some to take a quick glance, others to sit and ponder the great events. Fourteen American presidents have made their way here, as well as 11 Nobel Peace Prize winners. Every month, more than 300 people come here to swear allegiance to this country and proudly become new citizens. In fact, Massachusetts native John F. Kennedy spoke here from this stage on the eve of the presidential election of 1960. But over the centuries, as thousands of people have come to Faneuil Hall, it's been the lone voice that matters. Whether it's John Kennedy or Lucy Stone, Frederick Douglass, James Otis Jr., or Samuel and John Adams, Faneuil Hall is the place to speak. As abolitionist Wendell Phillips said on this floor, when liberty is in danger, Faneuil Hall has the right, it is her duty, to strike the keynote for these United States.